The painter Fabienne Verdier has always been an adventurer. She constantly explores new territories, seeking to be in tune with the energies around her. In a state of resonance with the world, she attempts to ride the wave of every instant, acting as a channel through her brush and other tools for the forces of nature, not least the power of gravity that carries paint and ink onto the canvas. Her work is at once deeply philosophical and rooted in the material world, connected to spirit as much as to matter, to the winds that shape clouds, the currents that animate water, the slow movements of the earth's crust as mountains and valleys are shaped, as well as to the movements of her own consciousness and imagination. tellurique de la montagne, je deviens tectonique et la chose naît d'elle-même. Je la vis intensément avec mon cœur, elle apparaît par moments de manière abstraite de cette manière-là. The tools that Verdi uses are unusual. Some of the larger ones are made from at least 20 horse tails, and others are made from a variety of animal hairs, from cats to wild boar. Each is chosen for the particular vigour and texture it provides. She first learned to use some of these brushes during a 10-year stay in China. She'd gone there in the early 20s, to learn from the last surviving Chinese masters. With them, she acquired knowledge of the ancient practice of calligraphy and the philosophy in which it's rooted. A practice that combines breathing, meditation, being in the moment, and the cultivation of spontaneity in all things. Avant de prendre un pinceau, on a passé des temps infinis ensemble. Quand on partait euh, faire des voyages d'études dans les montagnes sacrées, je prenais mon petit crayon, je, je griffonnais, je... 
Et alors là, il souriait tout seul, il disait « Mais que fais-tu là Tu cherches à copier la forme que tu as devant toi Il faut que tu te laisses totalement pénétrer par l'essence de, de ce vivant qui est en toi. Et un jour, la poésie peut-être surgira de ton pinceau et que tu auras des choses à dire. » Back in Europe, the lessons that Verdi had learned in China nourished a resolutely contemporary approach to painting, a journey of experimentation that continues to this day. Although much of her work requires solitude and silence, Verdi has increasingly drawn inspiration from adventurous and sometimes risky encounters and collaborations. The Swiss collector Hubert Loza, fascinated by the way in which Verdi's brushwork incarnated a rare kind of spontaneous energy, invited her to paint in response to works he'd acquired by Willem de Kooning, Cy Tombly, Donald Judd and Richard Serra. In 2012, the Groninger Museum in Bruges asked Verdier to make a series of works inspired by paintings from some of the great Flemish masters, including Jan van Eyck, Roger van der Weyden and Gerhard David. As a child, Fabienne Verdier was an exceptionally talented musician. Music has continued to move her deeply. In 2015, she embarked on a series of risk-laden collaborations with musicians at the Juilliard School in New York. She explored with them the resonance between sound and image attempting simultaneous creations that express the essence of each in a series of single shared moments. Bloop. Sustained. Bloop. 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 Look at that. This is you. <laughs> no, that's you. <laughs> the, the way that the sound connects. I really liked the quiet, patient way you took your time and felt your way through the painting. I mean, it's beautiful what you did. Thank you for oh. When you have space, suddenly you are in high receptivity and you hear your inner voice. And sometimes the inner voice appears itself. I don't know how. It's a great mystery. Together, we dare explore the unknown field. Free, to me, I think, is being more of myself. And this is really helping me to loosen up, get to a deeper space. 
Yes, and, 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 and you will trust. discover and you will discover mm. some part of yourself you even didn't know. A recent exhibition at the Pinacothèque der Moderne in Munich created a dialogue between her own work in the collection and paintings by Sigmar Polka. It was a spontaneous proposal which came up just like that from Mr. Marz, uh, the director of uh, the museum here. It's always a great endeavor to not only look at one painting, but to draw comparison. It's like a paso doble. Uh, there are two partners dancing together and they, of course, perform in their individual way, but there will also be new discoveries. Another adventure involved working with the lexicographer Alain Rey on the new Robert Dictionary, which contains images for the first time. Verdi's paintings were inspired by her intuitions around the essence or energy fields of certain words and the resonance between them. Au départ, je pensais choisir des mots. Et quand on rentre dans le dictionnaire, on rentre dans un squelette qui peut paraître mort. Et je voulais savoir comment aider le public à réinsuffler une pensée en mouvement. Et, et tout à coup, je découpais les mots et il s'est passé un jeu de hasard où les mots ont voulu se parler. Et très rapidement, j'ai vu que j'avais découpé labyrinthe et tout à coup liberté. On crée, en choisissant ces deux mots, un, un arc de tension presque électrique, surprenant. On sortait de l'idée qu'on a très fixe de la définition d'un mot et on ouvrait sur un champ et un imaginaire euh, euh, surprenant. Inspired by the Juilliard experiment, Fabienne Verdi started a new project with young string players at the Aix-en-Provence Festival. Le peintre est un chercheur, il a besoin de se retirer du monde pour pouvoir s'extraire du temps des hommes, pour rentrer dans celui de la méditation, et il n'y a que le silence qui permet ça. Verdi's search is as much about bad timing, false starts and blind alleys as about successfully being in the moment. Such failure leads her to destroy around 80% of her work. In the fond du jardin, I created a lieu de ritual and je, je brûle par le feu. C'est un moment euh, très violent, mais en même temps un moment euh, important de purification. La réalisation spontanée, c'est quelque chose de très rare. Ce n'est pas une chose qui s'obtient tous les jours. Alors peut-être quand j'aurai 80, 90, 100 ans, j'aurai cette sagesse-là et cette maîtrise où tout à coup, dans la saisie de l'instant, j'aurai une totalité sublime et 
c'est une vie de travail pour arriver à ça. 